Welcome to the Dharamshala International Film Festival's virtual viewing room. The festival has been going for 10 years now, founded by filmmakers Ritu Saran and Tenzin Sonam. And my name is Gaetano Maida. I am the executive director of Buddhist Film Foundation. Our International Buddhist Film Festival programmed the selections for this year's virtual viewing room. I'm really delighted to have with me tonight or today, depending on where you are, uh, filmmaker Max Pugh, who co-directed Walk With Me. Welcome, Max. It's great to be here and great to see you again. Uh, you know, it's been a tumultuous uh, two weeks uh, for, for you and for anyone involved with uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, he, he died in Vietnam at the age of 95. Um, just uh, on the 22nd of January. I imagine it's been uh, eventful for you. Can you describe uh, your um, reaction and, and uh, how, it, how it has affected uh, your, mm, your experience with the film? Um, yes, it, it has been eventful, even though um, it wasn't a surprise in the sense that we had anticipated this and, and, all, and even rehearsed uh, Ty's passing several times since he had his major stroke in 2014, which so um, which took him out of the out of the public uh, eye. Um, about two or three years ago, uh, he really came so close to death that the entire community um, prepared um, words, video, video announcements on how to practice at home and how to how to deal with the, the death of the teacher. Um, and so really, when it when it did happen, you might actually think, uh, you know, they, they might somehow be beyond grief. Um, that's not the case, though, because then what what happened was this huge sort of outpouring of genuine grief, which I think is testimony to the power of Thich Nhat Hanh, to the power of Thai on his uh, his students, his monastics, and also the wider world. I think I have been um, very moved to see the reaction beyond the monastic community on, on global um, uh, social networks, for instance. And I've also shared the the monastic reaction because the, the, the only reason Walk With Me came about was because uh, it was my younger brother who ordained into the community. And so obviously I've, I've been in, in tight uh, communication with him in the last two weeks. Uh, he happens to be here in France um, along with Sister True Dedication. And uh, they, so, you know, nobody traveled to, to Vietnam. All that has, has been done. Uh, the, the previous times when, when they thought that Thai was going to pass away, a lot of them went over to Vietnam. Um, now, I think par partially because of COVID and partly because of an increased sensitivity to global warming issues, uh, there's a lot less international travel going on in the community and so they um they really put an incredibly beautiful moving sensitive but also very well oiled kind of machine into into gear uh, out of plum village in france but they coordinated all the global monasteries um, and of course all the ceremonies over five consecutive days out of vietnam and my brother and, and sister, True Dedication, and, and uh, Fap, Fap Hu, who is also very close, was very close to Thai and is, is abbot of the upper hamlet of Plum Village, were barely sleeping over five days in order to uh, make sure that Australia, the US, um, and Vietnam were all, all communicating with, with Europe. And you can imagine those, those time zones. And so, I have only read and seen and, and myself felt very strong, very beautiful emotions of gratitude really to them for having um, allowed actually people internationally to sh to share in the in the in the passing and to recognize such an extraordinary um, human being and um, to celebrate his his legacy. I don't know what is planned uh, from today. Um, because of course these these five days of ceremonies are now over, um, but I'm sure it's not the last 
that we've heard in terms of you know reflections honoring uh Thich Nhat Hanh's, uh life yeah it's been extraordinary and, uh... yes in terms of the film you you asked me about the film um and anecdotally, I mean, I think I think that the the uh, a radio station in the in the UK, I, I did an interview with them about a, a week ago because they actually chose to do three um, obituaries that that week, and and it was um, you know the rock singer uh, the night well for for me he's a very nineties nineties uh, person, but it was um, Meatloaf who died, and it was uh, a very famous Italian footballer and it was Thich Nhat Han, and it was um amazing to be sort of on an obituary show with these three very 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 different people but to see imagine. that yeah to see that Ty was being honored uh, even even by the sort of the more popular press um so and they were obviously they, they were doing the the interview through the lens of the film because Ty's words in Walk With Me, a spoken by Benedict Cumberbatch, who of course takes this to a, to a, to a new audience. And um, so, yes, there, I think there has been renewed interest um, in the film as a result. Um, I don't have any um, sort of direct evidence of that yet, but I'm sure that in, in the next two or three months, we, we will see possibly that there has been an uptick in in viewers on 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 netflix and and so on and um it's wonderful on that on that matter to be part of the the film festival here at uh at diff um and to have been asked to, to be part of this screening room uh along with the other films which look absolutely beautiful well i i thought it was important to uh, place this film uh in uh this context uh, uh, particularly considering the most recent um, uh, transition for uh, Thai. Uh, you, so you said your 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 brother sort of be, became your door into Plum Village. When did you uh, have the sense that uh, you were going to make a film? Uh, you know, as as opposed to just being a a visitor a retreatant. The the interest was um, had kind of in risen arisen in me from about 2008. So I first heard the, the name Thich Nhat Hanh on the lips of, of my brother in 1999. And that, I think, corresponded with my brother's maybe second or third year at, at university. And um, then he would he would go to Plum Village and he would, you know, go in the summer. And and gradually he, he went over the next few years after graduation, he went more and more and more frequently. And so I, I became more and more familiar. But at that point, I was quite skeptical. Um, I didn't I didn't know quite what he was going to get involved in, whether it was some kind of cult or um, I was already very well known, but the Internet was not, you know, the favoured tool of of research in 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 the mid 90s or so the, the late 90s rather um however you know by the time we got to sort of early 2000s mid 2000s it was possible to read a lot more about thai uh, online and and to reassure ourselves as a family my, i'm thinking of my father particularly who, who were quite worried about what what my brother was getting involved in mm. um so by the time then 2008 came along and he decided to ordain we were actually very supportive of that of that decision and i think it's his ordination ceremony uh that, that made me feel that this would be an incredibly powerful subject of a, of a film as a, a way into a buddhist way of life asking and opening up all the questions that, that arise around that but through a western life through a young western uh uh person and and uh um, you know two two people i knew you know my brother and, and sister true dedication ordained at the same time and so i saw these two lives changing hugely in front of my eyes um so what's interesting is that i i felt very strongly in 2008 that this was not the time to make a film that i really just wanted to be a witness as a family member and as a support to my brother but not to somehow disrupt their practice because it's very sensitive in the early years of ordination the last thing you want is a camera in your face so i actually sort of let go of the idea actually without re re without recognizing myself that i was practicing one of the things that Thich Nhat Hanh, um 
proposes, which is which is non non attachment. I actually just naturally let go of the idea and let them live their lives. And I would check in every now and then as a as a brother and as a not at that point a a a practicing follower of, of Thai at all, just as a brother. Um, and then gradually as a friend to some of the other monastics as well. And then in 2011, so a full three years later at Lunar New Year in February 2011, mm -hmm. um, it was one of my brother's senior monastics, Fat Jung, who at that point was in California, but he had come over to France for, for a teaching tour. Um, he actually said, look, we'd really like to make a documentary about this practice uh would you do it and and the 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 in fact they had they had kind of come up with a plan which was to make a road movie they said why don't you accompany us on our u.s tour and it'll bring up lots and lots of unexpected situations of encounters with 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 people um and it'll be like monks on a on a bus tour uh like they said it's like a road movie a rock a rock band movie but without the sex uh and so i sort of saw what a brilliant treatment what a brilliant way into a a way of life that really people have absolutely no no real idea about i mean if you don't if you haven't grown up in in a, in a buddhist countries in in asia where it is you know common for a member of your family to to go into monastic life at some point either stay there or for a short time the the principle or the idea of a buddhist monastery really is very alien in, in western culture and so I knew that this would be a good way in. And when they asked, I just said, yes. I said, listen, I mean, at that point I was doing two other films, but they were documentaries. So you could kind of, you know, shift shoots around and you always get time between shoots. I said, I think I think I can take this on. Um, and then I got uh, I got my my very uh, good friend and filmmaker, Mark uh, Francis involved and, and we started making it together. And that was another way that we could cover cover um more efficiently the u.s tour because he would do one part then i would do another part then he would do another part and we and we, we um we then we then debriefed afterwards um and then we worked together on on subsequent shoots but that's how what with me came about um that's the the, the story of the that's the, the the genesis of the film was that actually they they were ready. I think. I think it's a it's a lesson really that sometimes you just got to wait until the conditions are right, and not push too hard, um, uh, because when when a subject is ready, it, it will speak to you, and in this case, literally invite you in. Uh, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you got to push, but in this case, literally they opened the door. So <laughs> I walked through it. Yeah, well, well done. Uh, how did you choose your characters uh, among, you know, the the ones that ended up in the in the film uh, in front of the camera? It was um, it was a casting process that one would normally do for an observational documentary. Though it started a lot more formally in the sense that we really did think Mark and I really did think that we would have these all of these monastics um, telling us why they became monks, telling us their backstories, telling us what families they came from. One was the uh, press person to the mayor of uh, Washington DC. My brother was a, a, a mathematician and um, classical uh, or, or rather composer. Um, Sister True Dedication, Sister Henium was a, a producer on, you know, one of the big news shows at the BBC. Um, they all had very, very, very interesting backstories from uh, from sort of life, not ordinary, ordinary life, if you like. Um, also, some of the Vietnamese monastics had incredible stories. So we thought that all of this information would end up in the film and so we cast the film really with a view to be to represent the diversity of the community but also find the the monks and nuns who could most clearly with humor with interesting stories and reflections cut through the camera and connect with the hearts of the audience um, in the end all of that becomes very very important because they still have to cut through the camera but none of those backstories are in the film other than a, a tangential uh, reference to uh, one of them when, in fact, um, Fapsiu uh, sits with his, his parents and they, they present him uh, unexpectedly with his 17-year-old diary. 
um, or diary of a 17 year old and, and in the sequence he's 30 at that point and uh, he's really shocked and, and moved to see this 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 testament to this former life when in fact he was going for the million dollar job for the mercedes for the huge house in california for all of these these um um material uh goals and ambitions and that actually at some point between the age of 17 and i think early 20s he decided to ordain so that's a powerful sequence but that's the only time when in fact that information is shown in the film we we just decided along the course of making a film as often happens with documentary to take a completely different course to cut all this information out and to allow the viewer to experience the practice through the through the camera and so really we just said in the end what we're going to try and do is create a cinematic meditation the meditation is going to include information but not in the way that you necessarily expect it you're going to have to really be, go on the journey. You're going to have to meditate with the film because a lot of the information is, is at a sort of higher level. You're going, in order to understand it and to, to draw conclusions from it, you're going to have to feel it. And you feel it by experiencing and listening and being aware of the present moment at each point in the film. So there's a lot of bells of mindfulness in the film. Uh, you should really uh get to a point if you're if you're going to get the most from the film of really being aware of even the, the wind and the breath and the and the, the tiny little micro details um which is why obviously it's you know it's wonderful that that uh you know we were able to release it in cinemas back in uh you know 2017 2018 with you also tano in uh in um san francisco um uh, to actually be able to experience the full picture and the full soundtrack of the film. Um, having said that, I think that in the in the years since, uh, there's a lot of people still watching it on on at home, um, and it's wonderful to know that the film still touches people and that it is not uh, dated in any way. Um, and I think again to go back to your first question, now that Ty has has uh, passed on at the grand age of, of 95, I think there will be a, a renewed interest um, in, in, in seeing him and experiencing him. And of course the film doesn't include a lot of Thich Nhat Hanh because it's not really supposed to be about him. It's about his community, it's about his Sangha. But of course we do see him and we do experience him close up for a few minutes. Um, and then we we hear his 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 voice in in uh, the narrations from fragrant palm leaves. Um, so I think that for people who are curious about Thai, it's one of the films, well along with yours, that people can go to in order to um, in order to learn more. Well, you you took the film to quite a few uh, different cities around the world, and I know it must have been a, a fascinating experience. What were your strongest impressions about the response to the film, uh, and and uh, you know, in particular cities? Very interesting. Um, it it was it was bigger than we thought everywhere right from the first the premiere in austin texas in the south by southwest festival um even the 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 organizers of the the festival who were very much very passionate about the film they didn't expect the tickets to sell out and so we had to move to this sort of one of i think their biggest uh, their boot their biggest movie theater um and then it was repeated several times during the during the festival in order to accommodate the the demand so that was wonderful that gave us a good indication that in uh, in this festival which is as much about you know contemporary music and digital um art and well south south by southwest which is such a sort of portfolio digital festival it's not just a traditional film festival that in the context of that you know it's a tech essentially a tech festival as well as a film festival basically that there would be such interest so that was great um and then london um also was an extraordinary reaction uh dublin dublin ireland i had been told already that the monastics themselves had been extremely warmly welcomed in, in Ireland because there's a great spiritual tradition in Ireland. Um, uh, uh, and, and so they love to 
embrace Catholic monastics, so they do Buddhists too. Uh, very, very uh, powerful to experience the, um, the the crowds in in Bangkok in Thailand, but that's also because I was lucky enough to screen the film with with Thich Nhat Hanh, who stayed through the whole film, um, even though he had his stroke and he was in his wheelchair. Um, Hong Kong as well, we were very supported by the local Sangha, which is very strong, or certainly was very strong, because obviously Hong Kong has changed a lot since 2017. Um, so I'm not aware exactly of what, what is happening there, but as far as I know, the, the monastery is still there. Um, in um, Paris, France was actually the last the last big screening I, I did, which was 2018 with Mark. And again, I mean, who knew that this small, you know, documentary, meditative documentary about a relatively unknown um, uh, Buddhist teacher, you know, everybody says, oh, second most famous, you know, after the Dalai Lama, but oh, people still only know the Dalai Lama. They don't know the second, the third and the fourth. They really only know the Dalai Lama. And so you end, you end up entering a, a very strong, a very beautiful uh, bubble, but it's still a bubble around Thai. Um, and here we were in the center of Paris in the biggest movie theater in Europe, the Grand Rex in Paris, which seats 2,800 mm. people. And we sold out. Mm. And we sold out. Uh, it's very rare. I mean, 2,800. I mean, they said that, well, this is the movie theater that was used for the big premieres, that is used for the premieres of Star Wars, of all the really big budget movies in France. Um, and they were, they didn't expect to sell out for this one, and they did. So, again, the public reaction was very strong, very passionate, um, and really hoping that, um, that people who, who, have discovered Thai through the film and have yet to discover Thai through the film and get a chance to now because of its availability on you know platforms you know all over the world um, streaming yeah yeah do you have a sense that um because of uh, the really extraordinary uh, international outpouring of of interest and um uh, I'd say respect uh, is the, the word that comes to mind since the, the, his death uh, two weeks ago, that there will be opportunities uh, to bring your film to audiences, uh, perhaps as, <laughs> if the, the, the pandemic eases up uh, in the various um, uh, major cities uh, around the world. Would that be uh, uh, something that you could respond to? Yes, yeah, with the with the greatest of pleasure. Um, however, it's um, it's not entirely clear to me now quite how that would be organised because, you know, the, the traditional distribution route is very much territory by territory and, and mm. everything else, um, and it's not often so creative. But I think I think you know, five years, are we already five years? Yeah, after the release of the film, or almost five years after the first premiere of the film, I think we have a lot more leeway and a lot more freedom. And so if there were a, um, like a, you know, a suggestion or a partner or a passionate partner, you know, willing to do that, then then we would definitely get on board. Um, and uh, it, could be a, it could be an extremely, um, uh, soulful and, and beautiful and as you say respect respectful thing to do for Thai and I think it would it would probably possibly help people get together not only because after the death people do want to get together but because during the pandemic of course people have not been able to do retreats no, in the same nothing. way that, that they used sure. to for the last for 2020 and 2021 all the Plum Village of receipts have been retreats have been like this on Zoom and wonderful as that is, as you were saying before, it is very different. Qualitatively, it is different. Um, so the community- Thich Han is very well known for his hugging meditation. Yeah, exactly. The, the community has, has put so much effort and investment into going online. They've become extremely expert at it. And I have myself participated in online retreats since uh, in 2020 and 2021, um, but I think we're all, desperate to get back to all meeting again 
uh, in in any of the Plum Village retreat centres worldwide. Um, and you know, if people do that in two hours in a in a movie theatre, it's a um, it's a similar experience actually. And 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 actually, often what we were doing when we did release the film was to actually have you know make a make a small meditation out of it and have a bell you know ring before the film and after the film and, and have a moment of reflection um well, you even did is, a walking meditation in new york as i recall we did you're right we did walking meditation in los angeles and new york um and uh in london as well um and i believe they did in asia as well although i wasn't part of it uh, before they came to the screening, I believe they did that too. So yes, so, I mean, all of that is all of that is possible, and in fact, um, very uh, I think very powerful for audiences to do more than just buy popcorn, sit down, and leave. <laughs> uh, how did you end up uh, engaging Benedict Cumberbatch for the narration? Because actually, towards the end of the edit, we realized that um, as part of what I was saying before about changing direction in the, in the production of the film and, and taking out all of the sort of traditional interview material that we felt might take it more towards television, give us give the audience a few too many kind of easy answers. Uh, one of the things we found was that the film was then too spare. And so we wanted to bring in Ty's voice um, and the only book I could remember of Ties that really spoke to me from a sort of human to human experiential, emotional heart level was Fragrant Palm Leaves. He wasn't in Fragrant Palm Leaves. He's emotionally very honest. He's very raw about the, the journey to eventual uh, enlightenment as a, as a sort of senior Zen master, even at though that point he's in his 30s. Um, his other books that I'd read had been more didactic. And so this one really was the one I remember. And, and I remember having a conversation with Mark saying, look, we should, we should, we should note passages in this book. I'm sure that they would be really powerful voiceovers. And uh, he agreed. And, and we, we worked on that. And then it came to who, and we made a short list of actors who had been somehow connected to, to Ty and, or had expressed some form of public, respect for him and um i contacted a, a huge i mean a very 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 uh, famous hollywood star uh, and and he replied immediately back to me on email and said this absolutely ties changed my life um and i you know i can't for sort of uh you know professional reasons name him but he was sort of he was up for the 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 the, the, the journey to, to do this to contribute to this film um, but then, in fact, um, after more thinking about the casting, we thought actually the casting might not be quite right. Um, and so I then had a conversation in, in London with uh, a, a very dear friend of mine who uh, is Benedict's business partner, Benedict Cumberbatch's business partner, and, and we go back quite a long way. And he said, well, do you want me to ask, ask Benedict? And he texted him there and then, and, and he replied immediately because he knew that he, he thought that he had he had he knew about Ty and, and Benedict replied and said that that um, um, one of his um, one of his books had had accompanied him on um, had accompanied him on um, a very a very powerful and personal emotional moment in his life quite recently. And so the, he wanted to sort of thank Ty by by giving us the voiceover, by the, the, mm. the narration to the film. And so that was wonderful because I I knew that Benedict's performance would be perfect. Honestly, the casting would be perfect. I had no doubts about that. And Mark agreed. And so that's how the Benedict choice happened. Wonderful. It's a, a testimony to your persistence and your instincts. I, I, I applaud <laughs> It's, uh, it's not easy to make those uh, decisions and to also have the connections that make it possible for these things to happen. So this is skillful means is, is the term uh, in, in Buddhism. You, you've, been, you've been good at it. 
Speaking of which, what are you working on now? Are you still making films and, and uh, what's next for you? Yeah, absolutely. We um, both, both Mark and I are working on, uh, on feature length projects at the moment. The pandemic has slowed them down, um, but uh, things are gearing up again now. Um, in fact, uh, I'm currently working on uh, two fiction fiction movies one of which is is now ready to shoot the other one is still um a little bit further away because we don't we're not we don't, haven't done the casting on that one yet mark is uh working on a, a documentary with um elizabeth gilbert um the uh yeah. the yes. the very well-known author and public speaker and and um and i think sort of yeah, in in many ways, guru, um, and that's a that's a very interesting film that he's been making f since the since Walk with Me was finished, um, and I think what's interesting is that both of us uh, carry with us, you know, Walk with Me. We always still we still talk about it. We still walk walk with it, and I think it influences everything after that. We we also worked together two years ago on a biography of Ty. Um, but which is not yet released because it is the, it is currently um, the the gift, if you like, of of the community to release that film um, when it's when they feel that it is, you know, a dignified and respectful time to do so. Um, so we 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 did put a lot of love and effort and especially historical research into that film. So it is ready to go, um, and and again the conditions will be right. Uh, and and I think as you, as you say, the skillful means is sometimes just to wait, um, as opposed to just pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, but I, I very much look forward to the moment when that that film hits the screens. We've been able to screen it privately within retreats um, uh, to people present in retreats. So that's hundreds of people and the the reactions have been very 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 powerful um but those audiences remain you know within plum village retreat community and obviously our 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 hope will be that that is released actually freely to the world just on youtube it, it's not uh, it's not going to be it's not going to necessitate a commercial release to that one it will just it will just work its way through the world um freely available online and i think if that's if that is a gift that we can give to Thai and the community. Um, that that would be a wonderful thing to see people learn more about him, because of course you know we were very conscious of the fact that Walk with Me is not a biographical film. It doesn't include black and white footage of Thai, you know, in the in the um, in his early days. Um, and so uh, actually, along with along with your film, it, it fills that gap, which is which is good. Well, I, I congratulate you on that. And if uh, the Buddhist Film Foundation can be of any assistance to you when the time comes, you know you can call on us. Uh, we, we would welcome it with uh, um, big open arms. I'm very, very happy to hear that you've done that. I actually reached out to the community uh, last two weeks ago and I said, you know, if, if, if there's anything we can do to help um, tell the story of, of Ty's life, you know, we are we are certainly uh, very very keen to do that. So it's I'm happy to hear that you're you're not only on the case, but it's just sitting ready to go. So that's that's, <laughs> exactly. that's good news. That's good news to me, and it's also very very good news to the audiences out there uh, who are watching uh, Walk with Me uh, here at the Dharmshala International Film Festival virtual viewing room. So I want to thank you, Max, for taking the time to speak to us. And I really want to thank you for your film. And uh, I hope uh, we'll, we'll get to talk again, perhaps in person, uh, when the time comes for uh, the, uh, the new film to be available. Do you have a title? Um, it's called A Cloud Never Dies. Exactly how he would want it. And it's a perfect <laughs> end to this because Thich Nhat Hanh was very clear. Cloud never dies. He hasn't died. He is with us. He is available to us. This is a, a very um, vivid lesson. He, he did walk the talk. Uh, there's no question about it. 
pleasure speaking to you again. Pleasure seeing you again. And again, uh, I, I hope we can meet in person at some point soon. I would love to see you in France. Absolutely. You're welcome anytime. Okay. Thanks again and enjoy the film. Dharmshala International Film Festival Virtual Viewing Room.